In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. It is a joy to come together today, and a particular joy that we celebrate the Feast of Corpus Christi, the Solemnity of the Body and Blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So his presence given to us in the Eucharist is really what defines us as a church in many ways, the real presence of Christ that shapes our faith and belief and that calls us together to him and to be with one another. So it is the very thing that we hunger for the most during these days and uh, that is satisfied as we begin to uh, experience our public masses um, but it is also that thing that nourishes us in a mystical and mysterious way. As we celebrate this weekend, we celebrate with our first communicants. So tomorrow morning's 1015 Mass will have the presence of one second grader. Uh, and then in the afternoon there will be a private Mass, although it will have the fullest church we've experienced for a while uh, with our eight second graders from the Catholic school who will be celebrating their first Holy Communion. And then next Sunday at one o'clock in the afternoon, uh, we'll celebrate with the remainder of the CCD students and their families as the second graders finally get to uh, receive what they have been working towards and longing for in the presence of Christ. And today, I uh, also have the joy of announcing who our new pastor will be. Uh, it is a mixed emotion, but it is with joy for you uh, that I do make the announcement. I hope there's some who know him. Uh, his name is Father George Cuddy Thayalkuthitotu, or something like that. So please don't tell him I tried to pronounce his name. Uh, he is... He uh, is an American citizen. Uh, he passed his citizenship and received uh, his identity and passport uh, during his first service to the diocese uh, when he was with us in the early 2000s. So he has been in the United States and served in the diocese. The last place he was pastor uh, is St. Patrick's and Sacred Heart in Eau Claire. So he was the pastor who guided them through a pretty significant restoration project as well. Uh, and he is a missionary of St. Francis de Sales. Uh, so he comes as a religious order priest uh, with his uh, diocesan parish experience. He is appointed pastor at St. Peter and Paul Parish in Independence and St. John the Apostle Parish in Whitehall with residence at St. Peter and Paul Parish Rectory in Independence, effective July 30th. So uh, that date, July 30th, is set, um, and he is supposed to arrive, however. Uh, he is coming from his current assignment in India. So he is supposed to arrive uh, the first week of July, and then he'll obviously have to go into a period of quarantine uh, until he's safe then to travel around. Uh, we're praying for him because at this point there is no flight that is secured. So we're hoping that he can confirm uh, his flight and arrive then uh, in, the in the beginning of July, can uh, finish off his quarantine, and then I want some time with him before uh, July 30th. So. I'll uh, pray for all that to happen. There are some international flights, but they are very limited, and they don't pass through Europe at this point coming into the U.S. Um, but he is an American citizen, so it is considered a repatri repatriation, and uh, there are many who are outside of the U.S. who are coming home still. So uh, we'll pray for him in that process, and. Uh, I do know him uh, pretty well, uh, and I feel like he has a very pastoral heart. He certainly has experience with schools uh, and uh, with his knowledge of Eau Claire and the local area. Uh, he comes to a place that uh, he is familiar with. So we'll look forward to meeting him when he arrives and uh, hopefully a period of 
uh, acclimation and training, and I have uh, some things to tell him. So we'll uh, look forward to all that. So please pray for Father George and uh, for his arrival. As we place all these needs before Christ, who is with us in word and in sacrament, let us ask that he look upon us with his grace and be with us with his mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus Christ, you are mighty King and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. You are Word made flesh, the splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Remember how for forty years now the Lord your God has directed all your journeying in the desert so as to test you, you by affliction and find out whether or not it was your intention to keep his commandments. He therefore let you be afflicted with hunger and then fed you with manna, a food unknown to you and your fathers, in order to show you that not by bread alone does one live but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of the Lord. Do not forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery, who guided you through the vast and terrible desert with its seraph serpents and scorpions, its parched and waterless ground, who brought forth water for you from the flinty rock and fed you in the desert with manna, a food unknown to your fathers. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because the loaf of bread is one, we, though many, are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The word of the Lord. Please recite the sequence with me. Lo, the angel's food is given to the pilgrim who has striven. See the children's bread from heaven, which on dogs may not be spent. Truth the ancient types fulfilling, Isaac bound a victim willing, Paschal lamb its lifeblood spilling, manna to the father's scent. Very bread, good shepherd, tend us. Jesus, of your love, befriend us. You refresh us, you defend us. Your eternal goodness, send us in the land of life to see. You who all things can and know, who on earth such food bestow, grant us with your saints the lowest where the heavenly feast you show, fellow heirs and guests to be. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Jewish crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
celebrating today the most holy body and blood of Christ uh, brings me back to uh, last year when we celebrated Corpus Christi and that was the weekend when on Saturday we uh, had the great privilege of seeing Father Brandon Genther's ordination and then on Sunday afternoon we had his uh, first mass and I remembered it uh, during the week as we were looking at this weekend thinking about the procession uh, obviously this year the procession is not occurring with the limitations that are uh, restrictive for us there's no forbidden statement that's out there but because of the social distancing and the movement within the church and outside the church uh, decided not to have the procession um, but it was clearly God who decided last year because Father Brandon really wanted it terribly bad and we had it all planned to make a last second decision uh, if need be and so at communion time I went to the sacristy looked out the window and it looked like Jesus was coming again and Armageddon was there with the wind and the rain driving and so I had to give the disappointing decision to Father Brandon that the procession would be indoors. The idea of bringing our faith to the outside, though, however, is an important one for us. This weekend's bulletin letter talks about uh, Poland and an encounter that I had on Thursday morning with someone from Poland just driving through, um, but there, you could see on YouTube and on social media, like we're all getting more used to watching the processions that were through city streets and outdoors with all the protections necessary. The idea of bringing the procession to the outside of the church is always a reminder to us that our faith is not a private thing. We do hesitate in the United States to talk about politics and religion because we know uh, what that can do to the conversation to families and friends but really that goes against the gospel and what Jesus does so today before the Jewish crowds he is talking as a Jew about the next movement in the covenant with God that the very Son of God will give himself to the world in a very particular way. When he recalls then the living bread that came down from heaven, they of course would know what he is talking about and we are reminded of that uh, in our faith, knowing, having just heard the first reading today from Deuteronomy, that this living bread that came down from heaven is what nourishes us in the desert, is the very manna that God gave to the Israelites as he marched them from slavery in Egypt to freedom in the promised land, flowing with milk and honey. Manna is that indescribable unknowable food that appeared in the morning after after the dew evaporated manna was their life force without it like without water they would have died in the desert and God sent that manna to protect them to give them life to make sure that they reached the destination of the promised land and it is an amazing truth that God had this moment with his son Jesus Christ in mind when that manna first appeared and that he would have this moment when we are gathered here to celebrate Corpus Christi in mind when he sent that manna into the desert and when his son showed us how he gives himself to us I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Jesus is uniting himself with the care that the Father gave to the Israelites in the desert, uniting himself to that revelation of the great I am who am to Moses at the beginning of his call and uniting himself to us as he will be given out body blood soul and divinity in the Eucharist after we repeat his words over the elements of bread and wine take this all of you and eat it this is my flesh 
This is my body, which is given for you. Take this and drink. This is the chalice of my blood, which will be poured out, the new and eternal covenant, the communion that we have with God. In continuity through the generations, God had us in mind when he called Moses to lead the Israelites, had us in mind when he sent his son to the Jewish communities, even as they quarreled about eating his flesh and drinking his blood. And he has us in mind when he calls us to eternal life, to be with him forever in heaven, in the resurrection of the body. So may the great joy of this season unite us together with one another, remembering the processions of the present and the past, remembering our union with Father Brandon Genther and whatever ministry he serves, remembering that we are here for the purpose of joining ourselves to Christ who calls us to himself. Professing our faith, together we pray. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us, men, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God our Father wants all to be saved and calls us to the knowledge of the truth. Let us pray to him with all our heart that the Eucharistic presence of our Lord always remains the center of all that the Church is and does. We pray to the Lord. Lord that parishioners, together with the incoming new pastor, may continually grow in Christ and with one another give witness to the virtues of faith, hope, and love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that our First Communion candidates to receive the sacrament of Christ's body and blood for the first time over the next two weeks may grow in love of God and neighbor throughout their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That in the midst of our nation's trials, our local medical personnel, service providers, and law enforcement may continue to keep us healthy and safe. May God watch over them with his grace and blessing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our loved ones whom God has called home find eternal peace in his presence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you sent to us your only Son, who gave us his flesh to eat and blood to drink. 
For this gift, we give you thanks and humbly ask that you hear the prayers we raise through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise, nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery. You make them holy so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament so that, bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the host of angels, cry out, and without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again, until Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours now and forever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, 
Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you with all my heart. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already in my heart and unite myself to you completely. Please do not let me ever be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that we may delight for all eternity in that share of your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. For the church and for the world together we pray, St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Our usual flow will continue now after Mass, so the exits on this side out the, nor the south exit and then out the north exit for the other side, and ushers will be there to hand out the bulletins. Um, and uh, just a reminder for our cleaning crew, it is a help. If you've used the pew, leave the kneeler down. That will tell them what pews to clean, and then any pews where the kneeler is still up, then they don't have to worry about that. So if you've used the pew, leave the kneeler down. As we go forth, may our uh, praise of God then be received by his grace poured out upon us. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.